Hey fellas, today we're remembering one of history's greatest eccentrics, Lord Henry Paget. A Welsh Marcus, Henry lived as lavishly as possible before his untimely death at the age of only 29. During his life, Henry was regarded as one of the wackiest people on the planet, and this is his story. Henry Paget was born in Anglesey, Wales in 1875 to Henry Paget Sr. and Blanche Mary Boyd. When he was only two years old, his mother died, and Henry was sent to Paris, where he lived until he was eight. Then, he returned to Wales, and the rest of his childhood was notably isolated. According to obituaries after Henry's death, his time in France, away from the UK, alienated him from his nation's culture and caused his exotic behavior. Although I doubt spending a few years in France turned Henry into an eccentric, it certainly is possible that his difficult upbringing could have played a part in his lifestyle. However, for a long while, Henry seemed to uphold the responsibilities of a Welsh nobleman. He was well-educated, receiving private tuition at Eton College, and besides English, Henry could speak German, French, Russian, and Welsh. After graduating college, Henry became a lieutenant in the 2nd Volunteer Battalion of the Royal Welsh Fusiliers. So, what happened? Well, everything seems to have gone off the rail following his marriage in 1898 to his cousin, Lillian Chetwin. If you're worried about the whole in-family marriage thing, you gotta keep in mind that a noble bloodline was a big deal back then, and clearly more so than cousin incest. Henry's marriage with Lillian wasn't anything too out of the ordinary for a filthy rich nobleman such as himself, although it was a bit quirky. He adorned his cousin bride with the contents of an entire jewelry shop for their wedding. Sadly though, it was only the tip of the iceberg for his poor cousin. You see, the jewelry shop bride wedding should have been a red flag for Henry and Lillian's marriage. It really seems like Henry was marrying the jewelry store instead. Henry wasn't so big on incest, he just really liked sparkling rocks. Throughout the marriage, Henry asked Lillian to pose nude, wearing only gemstones and jewelry for him to admire. As the story goes though, Henry only looked and never touched. This paints a pretty bleak picture for Lillian. She certainly didn't enjoy her situation all that much during her time with Henry, and it's no surprise that she filed for divorce only two years after marrying him. The marriage was able to be annulled since it was never consummated. After Lillian left, Henry fully committed himself to his true love, himself, but more on that shortly. You see, some important things happened in Henry's life during the two years he was married to Lillian. Shortly after their marriage in 1898, Henry's father passed away, and Henry succeeded to the role of 5th Marcus of Anglesey. The title wasn't so much the point, though. Rather, upon Henry Sr.'s death, Henry Jr. got a lovely boost in allowance, on par with 13 million pounds today. He also got control of his family's estate, which was like handing a lighter to a masochistic haystack. First, he tested the waters by renaming his family's estate from Plasnewid to Anglesey Castle. Then, once he had a taste for true power, Henry began his master plan. You see, the only thing Henry liked as much as jewelry was theater. And by God, his estate chapel was absolutely killing his vibe. So, Henry converted the chapel into a 150-seat theater that he dubbed the Gaiety Theater. In his brand new theater, Henry held regular productions where he paid professional actors 10 times the typical wage for a role at the time. So, how much do you think you would charge for a seat to see one of these productions? Nothing. They were absolutely and totally free. And I think there are two plausible reasons that Henry would have had free entry to the Gaiety Theater. The first is that he simply wanted to promote theater and the arts within his community, which would make sense since Henry was such an artistic fella himself. But the second, more convincing reason is that he wanted as many people as possible to come see the productions. Why? Because Henry always took the lead role. 
And boy, did Henry take advantage of those lead roles to flaunt his wealth. At every production, he would wear costumes that in today's currency would cost millions. He would then proceed to dance around the stage in these costumes, costumes which his audience couldn't afford even if they combined all of their collective life savings. Nevertheless, Henry's flamboyant and eccentric behavior, along with his free productions, made him beloved by the community. For his stage performances, Henry was nicknamed the Dancing Marcus. In September of 1901, Henry was in London attending the stage premiere of Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes when his French valet stole two million pounds of today's money in jewels from Anglesey Castle. Presumably, Henry was so impressed by Sherlock Holmes that he enlisted Arthur Conan Doyle as a private investigator to find the missing jewels. Which is just fabulous. I mean, it's the closest thing to a real-world Sherlock Holmes case that the world will ever get. Unfortunately, the jewels were never found, but that isn't all that surprising, considering that Arthur Conan Doyle was a writer and a physician. He wasn't a detective. On the bright side, though, two million pounds was nothing for somebody as carefree as Henry Paget. Everything we've considered so far took place during and just following Henry's marriage with Lillian. However, after Lillian left, Henry really jumped off the deep end. In late 1901, Henry bought a professional theater company and went on tour for the next three years. And if you thought his life pre-tour was extravagant, then you can scarcely imagine Henry's expenses during the tour. If his money hadn't run dry, I firmly believe that Henry would have stayed on tour forever. Unfortunately, you can't pay your performers with dancing. And in 1904, Henry fell deep into bankruptcy. His tour ended and he returned to Wales to fix the mess his lifestyle had made. Among the assets that he sold to pay off his massive debt were his dog collection, fur coat collection, jewel and gemstone collections, and literally everything else he had bought during his brief stint as Marcus. His cousin Charles then took over the Paget estate, and Charles returned everything to the way it was before Henry got a hold of it. Charles changed everything back. Charles and his family were appalled by Henry's financial decisions and their consequences on the estate, so they completely erased him from history. Charles burned all of Henry's papers, renamed Anglesey Castle of Plasnewit, and he de-renovated the Gaiety Theater back to a chapel. Soon, only select artifacts from Henry's time as Marcus remained. Everything else was totally gone. In 1904, Henry was sent away to France by his family with a meager yearly allowance of £200,000 by today's money. Of course, to any normal person, that's no meager allowance. But to Henry, it was devastating. And after only a year of exile, a bad case of tuberculosis-induced pneumonia led to Henry's untimely death at the age of 29. Despite his tragic last year of life, Henry's eccentricity left a lasting legacy that his family could not erase. Today, flamboyant musicians such as Freddie Mercury have been compared to Henry, and modern writers have made plays and novels commemorating Henry's life. Henry's story is one that begins and ends with tragedy, but in the middle, he was one of the most interesting individuals in the world, and his life is a story worth telling. All right, fellas, get out of here.